dude online made himself and I started watching that and then he just kept talking about boo 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 boobs and I'm like, you know what, let me not watch this. <laughs> well, this is episode one hundred and thirteen of Seti Pumko Part Two The Revenge. And this week America's foremost revenge themed yeah. podcast. George wanted to watch uh, Beastmaster uh, oh, Two. Oh, I say it. <laughs> oh, you Wait, say, no. it. say it. Proper title, Tim. Beastmaster Two through the portal of time. True. Arizona's own from 1991. And yeah, and as, we, as we continue our tour of the 50, our tour through the 50, 50 nifty United States regional film, a celebration of regional film. If you live someplace and somebody near you made a movie, let us know because we'll watch it. And and going to have an age old question, George. What's the age old question, Tim? Did the shoemaker, the shoemaker, or the cobbler, cobbler? As he may be. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did he ever yeah. get revenge on the devil for selling him a bunch of bad souls? So I came up this week. I had a lot of, a lot of work to do. <laughs> Go to song. <laughs> it's Seti Binko Part Two: The Revenge, the show where we create revenge sequels that nobody wanted. Seti Binko Part Two: The Revenge. We, we told what, we told what the show is about uh, three times now. Yep. Both Let's say it again. And you. Actually, we, did, we didn't actually. The point oh. of what we do, we're revenge themed. Mm-hmm. We craft revenge sequels for movies that never had them. Yep. And yep. we pick In an card. amazing act of improv. Oh, oh, oh we're and doing also, this this time, huh? <laughs> we are picking a number from a jar because when now, we, folks, after we watched this Tim movie. The, yeah, yeah. yeah did Tim add the numbers for the ones I put in yet, or is he still <laughs> going to pretend that they're not in there? They're very heavy. They're written on heavier paper, so they go to the yep, bottom. Yeah, so we'll I wrote all them. these. I wrote all these ones, and Tim's just not doing them. He's just not going to do them. We did one, but what are we doing? Yeah, but We're you, talk you put about the paper back too. in. Yeah, yeah, because you had, you pulled out one of yours. <laughs> we talk about yeah, Beastmaster Two: The Portal Through uh-huh. Time. And yep. at the end of this movie, we're going to say what character? We're going to ask it's most ourselves. likely two. Yeah, which what, thirty-two? What's the, what's the 32. thing you wrote this time? Thirty-two. Is you up there in thirty-two? Uh-huh. Who? Nope. Who is most likely to get an elevator speeding ticket in Papua New Guinea? Because <sighs> the questions are international. Yep. You know where Papua New Guinea is? Oh. <laughs> hey. hey. You know how you know how fast a year goes by? How fast, Tim? A year ago, we were talking about uh-huh. the Gloucester or Gloucester, as you say it, cheese chase, where they chase <laughs> oh, the cheese down the hill. Don't you dare say <laughs> I was the Gloucester, you fuck. <laughs> it happened again. Oh, it and just was the person again. who won knocked unconscious again? No, I, nothing bad happened. Some man rolled down the hill in a gorilla outfit and lost his gorilla head and his gorilla feet. That's the funniest oh. thing. I <laughs> just to remind listeners, last year oh, what happened, yeah. the woman who won... Uh, actually, while apparently pinwheeling down the the hill, lost consciousness, yes. and her body just ragdolled across the uh, finish line, and she won, even though she mm-hmm. didn't realize she won. And what they win, Tim, if I recall, it's a giant wheel of cheese. Yep, I think so. I think we look. And into so for it. a year, they get to eat free <laughs> cheese. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seems seems like that <laughs> woman heavily concussed. At least it seems is a bad move. Live like kings. <laughs> Eating in, cheese, in having infrequent bowel movements because their systems are clogged with just cheese. <laughs> it's good stuff. I did well, actually find a revenge story this week, you know. Oh. Yep. I don't know if we should even share it. So it's weird. It's just like this is the world oh, we're why? living in now, Tim. So for those of you who are listeners, uh, you know that every once in a while, and it's a very great while, Tim and I will try <laughs> to share a lighthearted revenge from the day's news. Yeah. Uh, a light, lighthearted tale of real revenge. And the thing is, uh, it's almost never lighthearted. It's always really fucked up. And this, this is a fucked up story, but in a really weird way. It is, uh, I'm just going to read you the headline. Okay. The woman's revenge killing on prom night was AI generated. Hmm. A news article got picked up about a so-called shoot a so-called shooting death of a teenager on her prime prom night, which was prompted by revenge because she was allegedly the daughter of a policeman, and this was printed up mm. everywhere. Was all created by AI? Oh, you mean it didn't really happen? Didn't really happen. Oh, you so see, thing, I thought you meant that some girl programmed an AI to kill this girl. I thought you were going to. Oh Ooh. no, we're not. We're not quite to that <laughs> world yet. 
So like, I don't know if that's like, it's not like I was kind of like, I got excited for a second. Cause I'm like, well, it's nothing real, but it's also, it's sorted and ugly. So just uh, AI take, yeah. it's coming for our jobs, everybody. Whose AI did that? What, what was the purpose? A test? I don't know. Let's take this whole part out. Let's cut it out. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> just wondering. Whose AI asking. did do it? Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm reading through the article right now. I'm removing people's names, even though they're not real people. Cyberdyne? Uh, what was it called? Cyberdyne Industries. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. forget what that even hmm. is. Is that from Terminator? That's the one. Yeah, it's the one that creates the Terminator. Hey, I remember hey. something. Yeah, pretty good. Boy, you don't you remember that stuff when your last name is O'Connor and her name was Sarah Connor because people would always be uh-huh. saying to me growing up, "Oh, like the lady from Terminator." I'm like, "Well, Whoa. actually, no. My name's O'Connor." And then they would be, "Shut up, nerd!" And they punch me. <laughs> and her name was Connor. Connor. Yep, yeah, not O'Connor. Right. Everyone knows that the the preferred if you're gonna have the name Connor in your last name, you want to put an O in front of it. That's the cool way to do it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, See, cut all that out. It's all garbage. Yeah. It's not garbage. It's all garbage. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh. Oh. Arizona then. Should we get to it? Because this movie's Let's long. get into Arizona. So uh I have I Good have night. facts about Arizona in general. Okay. And I have facts about Real the facts. movie. I guess we should start big and start with Arizona, right? Yeah, big. All Arizona's right. big. Arizona is big. It's a pretty big state. Uh, let's see. Arizona. Um, here's my Arizona facts. Uh, it was along with California, Utah, Nevada, and New Mexico. Used to be part of Mexico. Mm-hmm. So I if someone that. were to confuse like California and Arizona as a, a shooting location... It actually makes sense because they all were so <laughs> part of the same spot at one point. Uh-huh. Unlike, say, I don't know, just pulling two states off the top of my head. <laughs> Unlike Texas and Massachusetts, two states which have no real shared connection, these two have a similar root. They're like brother and sister. Um, after the Mexican-American War, though, when we handled General Santa Ana, his ass, mm-hmm. uh, in 1848, it became a, uh, a property of the United States. It became a territory in 1863. Okay. All right. And then finally became a state in 1912. Okay. Used to be part of New Mexico after that thing, but they voted to secede from the Union because they're racist. And so much the way South Carolina is the shitty version of North Carolina, Arizona is the shitty version of New Mexico. I'm just saying. Nice people. Nice people in both places. There's nice people everywhere, (laughs) Tim. If you want to be that guy, if you want to be there's good guys on both sides, you be that guy. That worked out well for the other guy who said it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's sure. uh, also known, uh, its state motto is the Grand Canyon State, but it's also okay, known as the state where, it's also known as the Beastmaster 2 state. There's a report all the time. <laughs> Sometimes. Because of what was filmed. Really? Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. It's home to the uh, Apache warrior Geronimo, who was the first person mm. ever to jump out of an airplane. Oh, boy. Uh, Racist. Yep. Uh, it's, oh, it's the location <laughs> of the Hoover Dam, which is the world's largest vacuum. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. You tripped uh, me up. Oh, it's Capital Phoenix. Contrary to popular opinion, is not named after the X-Men Jean Grey. Wow. It's actually named after the uh, cosmic being that took her place, oh, okay. dying famously really? in X-Men War 41. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, you know, a lot of people think that's Jean Grey, but it's not. It was the Phoenix Force. Got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. First elevator was in Jerome, Arizona. Nope. In the year 1926. Tim, you'll be excited to hear this. This what? elevator still exists and is said to be haunted. Ooh. By yeah. who? Who died? I don't know. I, I read a little bit about it. Like this one's like weirdly, this was well documented. They just say it's like Ooh. there's ghost stories about it. It doesn't say if somebody died in the elevator, but I assume that must have been what happened, right? Why else would you haunt well, an elevator? Mark Twain, he died in an elevator, right? Could have been him. Mark Twain does a lot of stuff, according to your your <laughs> reckoning. Did you see their flag? Or are you done? Sorry. I have one more. Yeah. Uh, the first uh, street. Oh, I have two more. Their first street car, street car mm-hmm. was the Phoenix Street Railway System, established in 1887, ran until 1918. It wasn't called the I Traction tr- Company? No, it was called the Phoenix Street Railway System. Okay. Why Traction? Is that a joke? No, that's what you call trolley cars, the Traction Company. Wait, really? That's yeah. That's, that's a name. That's a name. Mm, okay. Um, 
I actually learned when it opened, it cost a nickel to write it. I was excited to do a currency calculator thing on it. Okay. Guess what, Tim? <laughs> they don't go back to nine. They, the earliest date they start is 1914. Ooh. This wow. thing started in 1887. So in 1914, are oh, you playing the music, right? Okay. Georgia's current currency current. Okay. In 1914, uh, a nickel has the spending power of, guess how much, Tim, now? $2. Close. A buck 58. Ooh. Ah. But I bet you if we knew what the hell a nickel cost in 1867 or 1887, Pretty you were probably more. exactly right. Uh, In personal history, I became aware of Arizona's sucktitude when their uh, governor during the 80s, Evan Meekum, he was the guy that refused to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Oh, I vaguely remember Yeah, Yeah, he did. He he said a lot of terrible things. He said MLK didn't deserve a day while addressing black leaders. He said, uh, y'all don't need more days off. You need jobs. And he was also the one who used uh, a racist term to describe black children. He really sucked. He eventually did hmm. get impeached, though, so fuck that guy. Where is he now? And, uh, yeah. So did you see their flag? I think that's all my stuff. No, what They're, was their flag? It's a star with these stripes going over the top. It looks like it was designed by Milton Glaser. Like, oh. Yellow So star. it's not like every other country, state we've been doing where it's just a fucking <laughs> southern confederate flag with one element removed because they're still like, yeah. we hate nope, not northerners. One of those. Okay. All right. <laughs> It also had a hawk on it to symbolize uh, Beastmaster 2. So. <laughs> Wait, Tim, <laughs> important question. Yeah. Was Sharak a hawk or an eagle? <laughs> well, he kept saying hawk. We'll get to it. He did? Okay. Oh, wait. Or did he say, oh, he said eagle. He said eagle, but I thought I think it was a he's hawk. an eagle. I think he's a golden eagle. Hmm. 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 Famous Folks, people from there. The... Stevie Nicks. Oh, sorry. Oh, Stevie yeah. Nicks? Yeah. All right. Who else? Linda Carter, who played Wonder Woman. No way, really? Yep. Ted Danson. That's that. I mean, I, I appreciate you being very 70s centric and everyone you're choosing, but like Stevie Nicks and Linda Carter, yowza. Well, Ted Danson, he's from the 80s. Yeah, is he? He's from the 70s, probably. And so is Bubbles, Michael J- Jackson's chimp. He was from there. He was born in the 90s, right? I think. Uh, that, that no. Chimp. Bubbles. Let's look. I bet you he's born in the 80s because I think by the 90s, Michael Jackson was already a problematic figure. Yeah. By the 90s, uh, Bubbles was tearing faces off people. Right. <laughs> I typed in bubbles and the character from The Wire came up. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Bubbles the Chimp. Born in 83, you're right. Oh, no, you said 90s. No, he's 83. Yep. Yep. He's still alive. Oh, my God. That poor chimp. Yeah. He was owned by Michael Jackson from 85 until 2005. So that's that's like a long time to own a yep. chimp. It is. And then the Center for Great Apes owns him from now until the present. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Enough monkey hmm. facts. <laughs> We're going to get to a few places in this movie. We're just going to say, like, they chase each other for a while, right? Oh. Because this is a Tim, long movie. <laughs> this is, I don't know. I mean, I don't, the plot on this thing. So I'm going to give you some background stuff, too, because I decided, like, instead of, because I, I was watching this, I'm, like, I'm going to take a note of this crap. Oh. Like, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna fess up people, too. Like, this was not a good movie. Like, oh, Really? And so it's Beastmaster 2, Through the Portal of Time, released in 91. It's a, by, a, uh, by a guy named Silvio Tabot. Mm-hmm. He's very Italian, if you watch the making of documentary. Oh, which I, I saw did. part of this. Yes, I did. Yeah, he's pretty funny. He was actually the producer, and he stepped in last second to direct. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you watch the making of, you know how impressive the making of looks? Yes. And like, <laughs> it's like, I'm watching this, I'm like, wow, they spent a lot of money and effort on these stunts mm-hmm. and these special effects. And then you see the finished movie, and it looks like shit. <laughs> so Sylvia Tabbitt, probably not a good director. Sorry. It's a sequel to 1982's Sylvia. original Beastmaster, which is a movie I must have seen 30 times if I've ever seen it once. Ooh, it took that long to make a sequel? Like, this is 91. Yeah, right? I mean, this shows, right? Like, it's nine Mark's, years from a sequel. Oh, Mark Singer did, like, V in between. Maybe. He was, he I don't know v. when V came. Yeah, he was, was in V, yeah. Yeah, somewhere in the mid-80s. Yeah. Mark Singer plays Dar. He is the Beastmaster. I call him uh, BM he for has, short. You call B- him BM? B- like, BM. Nice. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> they should have done that as a part in this. Yes. Um, he has... He is a man who is able to communicate 
with some animals. His eyes, he could see through their eyes, is Sharak, the eagle or hawk we were just discussing. He has two little, uh, his hands, his little thieving buddies, are two little ferrets named Kodu and Podu. Yes. <laughs> and then he ha- his muscles, or he has a tiger named Ra. Yep. Just so close to Ra. But... Did he say Ra? Yeah, it's I, Ra. I kept saying, I had a uh, closed captioning because I always wanted to learn people's names. And I was myself, I was saying <laughs> Ru. <laughs> The closed this caption must have been insane. <laughs> this is insane. Speaking of, so apparently Beastmaster is based on a book by Andre Norton. I read that too. Yeah. But did you read what the actual book's about? No. Just All right. So this character I described, Dar, his name in the book is Hostine Storm. He It's set in the future of Earth. He is a Navajo soldier who is like, you know, Earth gets destroyed and he goes to another planet. And he is able to communicate with genetically altered animals. Oh, let's see. So they changed it quite a bit because this yeah. is set in like another universe. By the way, Through the Portal of Time is a lie. Yes. It's an alternate dimension. <laughs> He's set in like a shitty He-Man universe. Mm-hmm. Um, he comes through into our world. And well, this is the give, part I got to... Yeah, you want to give a short what? synopsis? Or what? Are you doing the short synopsis? No, I want to give a little background first. Okay. Oh, here, all right, here's the short synopsis, actually, yeah. So uh, following the events of the first movie where Dar overthrows the bad guys of his world, um, turns out he doesn't. Uh, there's a guy named Arklon who, is, for some reason, is revealed to be his brother, mm-hmm. has taken over. Arklon has a ray gun. Yes. Um, Arklon dis- discovers from a witch who's played by the lady, who's played by Ursa from Superman 2. Um, oh. Yeah, right? You know, I didn't hubba, hubba. I did no, not even I did. that. And uh, he decides to come to our world to steal like a nuclear bomb or something so he can yes. take over his world. <laughs> and uh, they all come to our world and um, they meet Kari Wur. And, and hilarity ensues. And yeah, and then weirdly, this movie is actually kind of a comedy, <laughs> which is like insane because the first movie's not at all. <laughs> and, uh, the, yeah. Um, it, it's kind of the plot to Star Trek Four. They travel through to a different time and they need to steal nuclear energy. To get back hmm. to their home time, you're familiar with that I mean, plot, right? You yeah, don't play hard. I mean, yeah, it's it is. You're right. And like Tim, I don't know. Like, if you had the ability to travel to another world, would your first inclination be to pick up a killer weapon? Well, like, he, what would you do if you traveled to another world? Well, I know. The, I don't know what's in that world. I mean, it's, from it's what we see, question. lots of desert. <laughs> oh, to his world. All right. Yeah, I don't know. That seems dangerous there. Desert. I wouldn't go there. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm bad not built world. for that. <laughs> nope. Well, I just want I to address it. this because there was yeah. a little bit of controversy behind the scenes where um, you're you're going to hear some real controversy coming up, folks. Let me just give you spoilers. But there was some controversy as to whether this counts as an Arizona film as they mm-hmm. transfer over to Arizona. Now, I have the ability when I go on IMDb to click on the link to show a multiple shooting locations. Yeah. So there were two California locations in this. Okay. There's that one street in uh, L.A. where they keep popping in through, which was that was pretty fun because that was all filmed without permits and shit, apparently. Oh. And then there is a place called uh, mm. Canoga Park, which is where her house is. Whose house? Oh, Vicky. Vicky. Is Vicky that her in name? our story. Yes, I wrote her name down. Yeah. And all the spots where the army base is and where uh, Dar's world are are all various desert locations including Glen Canyon, Arizona, Page, Arizona, the Grand Canyon, Arizona, which is pretty Mm. awesome, and my favorite, Tuba City, Arizona. Tuba City. That sounds fake. Mm -hmm. I mean, (laughs) you know, I remember there was an old episode of uh, um, Last Podcast Left where something happened in Tuba City, and they were all delighted. So I felt all of their reflected glory at this. still think it's fake. (laughs) Probably. And, uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, Mark Singer, oh, yeah. he, he, uh-huh. play, he played the voice of Man Bat in the animated Batman series. Wait, really? Yep, that's what I saw. Am I, I'm, that was the, I remember the first episode that of the Batman the series was with Man Bat, and I don't remember him talking. Well, <gasps> he, when he's Professor Langton, right, he talks. Oh, that's probably true. Because I, I just got excited because he does make a ridiculous squawking noise whenever he's talking to his <laughs> eagle in this movie. I'm like, yes. is that him? Uh, other actors of note in this, uh, Kari we'll Wur from uh, Remote Control and Sliders plays the uh, valley girl kind of 
human okay. that they befriend, Vicky. the Courtney Cox role, if you will. Well, we should um, say, Sarah, yeah, they, they, if you still don't give a plot. I did. They come to Earth. They come to Earth. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sarah Douglas, who played Ursa in Superman 2, is a witch named Lorana. And uh, a guy named Wings Hauser is Arklon, who is Dar's brother and has like a ray gun and yes. a fucked up eye. That happens in the opening scene, though. So should we start this? Yeah. I took <laughs> we're, notes. We're in. You took yeah. no notes. We're in the Beastmaster's world, which I think they actually say is called Earth. And. No, I thought it says darkness fell over Ark Arak. That was the land, Arak. Yeah, but don't they later on say Earth? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing, folks. It's another dimension. They all speak English, so don't worry about it. Yes. Um, it's like Beastmaster has been captured by this guy, Arklon, who has used his sorcery to take over the world. His sorcery mm-hmm. is a weird ray gun. They never explain anything about it. She's gray beams. So he's not in the first um, movie. I don't remember. I haven't seen no, the first no, movie. No, none of these characters are from oh, the first movie. Okay. The first, they do mention in The Crawl, they mentioned something about he fought the high priestess Mayax. Yeah, yeah. And that was the main bad guy played by Rip Torn in the original movie. Okay. Yeah, Rip Torn, real actor. <laughs> <laughs> John Amos was in it, and Tanya Roberts and other people that you've maybe heard of this yes. movie. Well, yeah. So Arklon has captured the Beastmaster and mm-hmm. they and he's conquered the world, so he brings him into like his little cave. Or, I, I mean, it's a canyon. It's a canyon because this is all filmed in canyons. <laughs> There's like priests there. They're like, yes, we're going to kill him. Like three judges sitting there just mm-hmm. watching this from a table. And they're like, yeah, let's get, and they're making this a big pomp and circumstance. Yep. And then they couldn't be more surprised when suddenly the Beastmaster's beasts break in and start yep. freeing him. Tiger, bird, uh, bird, and weasels. Yeah. So here's some fun continuity bits. In the first movie, Ra is black. The tiger is oh, black. Oh, or yeah, Rue. So they just, but I had heard, or Rue, as you may say, but, um, I had heard from another podcast, but I couldn't find this online. So I think they were mistaken that the tiger in the first movie died because they died. It like it actually passed oh, away. I hope not. I hope not too. And, but this tiger was noticeably smaller and was just normal tiger colored, not black. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you this though. The weasel, one of the weasels definitely dies in the first movie. Oh no. You so see it's it back on screen? now. He does find like baby. Oh, yeah, oh, it's, in it's, the story. I gotcha. Got you. Yeah, it actually kills Rip Torn. It bites him and he falls into lava. Wow. So you it's can back make up to... anything because I have. I think I saw it <laughs> somewhere in the eighties. Oh, it's such a such a gloriously bad good <laughs> no good bad movie. And uh, yeah, the eagle's okay, I guess. But the eagle, like, there's a whole thing. The tigers fucking people up. Yep. The weasels free the the beast master. There's a bunch of flipping. He's hitting people with axes. Yeah, he doesn't cut um, the priest's heads off. He just slams the axe in their face. Weird. Yeah, because there's not a lot of violence in this movie. Nope. No as blood. It turns out. And I had, yeah, there there were scenes where it seemed like people were being stabbed, but I, I that you couldn't see it. There's no blood at all. No. Um. Well, I guess there's a little bit because the eagle flies and attacks the face of Arklon. Right. right. And it looks like it rips out his eye. Although we see later, uh, just the spoilers. Arklon spends half the movie looking like um, Phantom of the Opera. Yes. Wearing a big half mask, and then at the end when he takes off, he's literally got like a scratch on his face. I'm like, dude. <laughs> You overreacted, you fucking jerk. Spoilers, George. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he escapes because they weren't... I love that a tiger snuck in, too. It's like, how bad is your guarding that a fucking full-grown right. tiger snuck in? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, they fuck a bunch of people. He, he hits them. They chase him. I call this section two. They chase him. <laughs> okay. Our, what our happens has next, a cover though? on his face. He has. Yep. Just, he meets this witch Time has passed. Liana. Yeah. I forget where she comes from, but he, oh, he captures she's her. She's a prisoner. Yeah, and she's an she's already like, existing prisoner. She's a witch. This I is Ursa. I will help you. The best thing you could do. I'm the best thing that happened to well, you. Well, she has that great line. Like says, he goes, if you fail me, I will cleave your black heart from your bosom. And she's oh, like, yeah. I have, she goes, I have a very nice bosom. I know. And all you want to do is, like, why would you want to cleave it? She said something like, why would you want <laughs> yes. to cleave my bosom? She Later, says, she has such a joke. My bosom cleaves very well in its own. Thank yes. you. She's witty. And you'll notice, Tim, Kinda. a little bit of foreshadowing. Mm-hmm. She speaks with, she calls him a dude. Hmm. She speaks with some 80s slang here, like 80s, what we would consider cool dude, be, like talking. Did, did she learn that after going to LA? Because she's already been to LA. Yeah. You think so? Oh, yeah, that's, she right. that's why she knows that she's been going back that's and forth right. for a while. That's right. Because she, this oh. witch, knows where there is a portal mm-hmm. not in time 
Not through the portal of time, but a portal to an alternate dimension. Well, it's L.A. It's a different time, yep. different place. Yep. Yeah, she does think the planet that they're going to is called L.A. She doesn't realize that. So she does. He says, she... L.A.? Archon Ar- threatens Arclan. everybody. Archon. Yeah. Yeah. He is. <laughs> I read a description where somebody describes him as a bulging warlord. And I liked that. I'm like, oh, bulging. He's a big dude, but he looks like. He doesn't look that formidable somehow. He's got skinny legs. That's what I saw. Yeah, and he looks like he looks like he's suffering from a lot of old sports injuries. Like this guy, mm. like twenty years before this, was probably could have fought Mark <laughs> Singer, but now he looks kind of. I don't know. He, he moves very yeah. stilted. Yes, like he's, he's in wounded. pain. Yeah, <laughs> not just because the eagle tore his face up, although not really. So they keep hunting him. I call this swamp part. Our clan's men yeah. are in a swamp, and Beastmasters is a swamp, and he hears them being mm-hmm. killed. And there's a swamp creature. Yep. Uh, Big old weird. It's actually it if you're if you didn't see the movie and you're listening along, it reminds me very much of an Urukai from the Lord of the Rings movies. Okay. It's got kind of a weird pig face. It's big. It makes noises like that. I, I didn't it, understand what happens next. Oh, he, he he was shooting people with X-ray eyes, and when he saw yep. Beastmaster's Poorly hand, drawn on X-ray. Yeah. Yes, he oh, saw. It, yeah, Beastmaster has the tattoo, and he's like, "Oh, mm-hmm. I've been around like." Uh, Gollum. He was like Gollum. That's no, he's more like Gollum. He's oh. like, I used to do and, this and that, and then I practiced the dark arts and I became this creature, Gollum. That's like what he said. Yep. And he yeah, said, and, he, and he's got a, I, a funny high pitched voice. No, it gets and he like reveals this, and he says, Oh no. It's like that, George. I took notes. <laughs> I remember being, okay. I believe you because I didn't take notes. Um but in his so dark the arts, pig Gollum, um, he says that yeah, you have, you a, brother? have a brother somewhere. Because he yep. saw his tattoo on his hand. Yeah. And I guess they tattoo babies in this world. I read online that apparently, because that tattoo is in the first movie, apparently it switches hands it's on, which I'm like, that's uh-huh. delightful. <laughs> it was on like his right hand in the first movie, now it's on his left hand. It's like, good <laughs> job. Like Mark Singer, if that's true, never thought to say like, yeah, was, I remember this being the other hand in the first movie. It's 10, 10 years, years ago. George, he didn't know. 10 years. Yeah, he didn't care. He'd been on V. Yeah, he'd been on V in big time. He's like, he kept thinking people were going to turn into lizards. Yes. Oh, oh, you're a lizard. You can eat that guinea pig. <laughs> Folks, that's a reference to the mid 80s TV show V, which probably v. no one remembers. No one remembers. Yep. So, so uh, yeah, the, does the pig guy die? He, he just dies, walks right? away because he realizes who he is. He goes away. What a weird he goes, I gotta go element. My, my precious. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> he walked away back into the woods. The swamp. It's such a of all the ways to impart the information that Archon <laughs> yeah. is his brother, which isn't really that important, really. No, and all this stuff like like to have him fighting a random like Urukai pig monster in a swamp. Mm-hmm. It was that weird. Yeah. Why does hmm. yeah? Well, I don't know. I don't know, George. I don't know. Then so they then go we to cut a portal. To, uh, and if you saw, well, no, we we cut oh, to. No. We, I mean, we. It's not Beastmaster doesn't go to the portal yet. No, no. it's um, it's Arklon, Arklon. and the witch, and, it and they're like, at this portal. Okay, I just want yeah, to it say it looks like what the portal on Star Trek episode City on the Edge of, edge of Forever for those who watch. I was thinking the exact thing. I said this oh. looks just like the portal in Star Trek: The Edge of Forever. You've seen that one. That's yeah. the one with the portal in it. Is yep. that the one written by Harlan Ellison? Yep, I did know that. Yeah, I'm they, a nerd. Everybody. They changed the ending on him, and he refused to write for them anymore. Oh, what was the original ending, and what did what aired, and what was the next ending? <laughs> well, the ending that they wanted was correct. The ending he wrote was: uh, Do I have to go through the whole plot? He has to let yes. a woman die to make history. He f- he fell oh, in love. This is, the one, is this one with Joan Collins? Yes, he fell in love with her, but he's like, I gotta let her die, or history is destroyed, uh-huh. and she's gonna get hit by a car, and they know where. And Kirk was supposed to go to save her, and Bones stops Kirk. But they changed it. They said, no, he's the captain. He's the one that would do the right thing. And he he does not go to do it. He die? Yes. And, and Harlan, Harlan Ellison, Ellison was mad was about like, that? Yep. That's the story. Every story I've heard about Harlan Ellison makes him sound like he is a difficult person to be around. <laughs> like every, He oh, sounds like a real curmudgeon. He got in trouble for other things. If, uh, even yeah, it's, it's I'm sure tape. that guy's been canceled. He was, yeah. get, he was given... Uh, an award by a woman he just like grabbed her breast as a joke like ha huh? it's, it's on that it's is on funny. youtube wait so. really it's oh yeah i'll send it what to you a later fucking asshole. <laughs> what a jerk <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All right. So what? So they're at this portal, and she's been like the witch has been telling Arklon this is a portal to another world, and he's like, "You best not be fooling me, witch. Oh, cleave your bosom." And the whole movie, and she's like, they, "You need me. You can't kill me. You need me." That's yep. Basically, her. and that's they really establish this. Mm-hmm. She, he needs her, but he's also like he's obviously going to turn her the first second he can. Yeah. yeah. Then we cut through to LA, our world. Yeah. Senator's and, daughter, uh, Vicky. And yep, she's, which that comes to yeah. absolutely nothing. She's speeding. And the police she's say speeding, she's, and she's the crazy She's supposed to be going one. to her sister. Yeah. And she was at her a, sister's wedding. She was at a crazy party. So she's date for, what, late for her sister's wedding. These are important points mm-hmm. for later. Yep. She is not dressed like she's going to a wedding. No. Well, she's, she's been speeding. at a party. Yeah. The person who's on the phone with her, I think is her dad we never meet. He's yeah, like, we, is that siren? She's like, it is siren. So she's in this crazy police chase. I know. Because she just drives like a lunatic. And we're supposed, she's always going to meet her dad. We never meet him. He's Yeah. <laughs> so like you think you established that she is the privileged rich daughter she of is. a senator. That that senator and there the movie involves spoilers stealing a nuclear bomb mm-hmm. or something. You think that somehow that they would get the senator and use his blood. No, they never do that. The senator nope, never nope, appears. This nope. never goes to anywhere. Um, <laughs> anyway, take, she's yeah. running from cops. They're chasing her. And somehow. She shoots down an alleyway. This one, we see a lot of this one alleyway. By the way, this was the one L.A. shooting set they had. And she, she, she shoots towards this brick wall. Doesn't even attempt to sit step on the block. No, just goes, just ah! Shoots through eyes. the wall. Like it's not even there. Like <laughs> Harry Potter style. And she is in another world. Yep. Archon. And then seconds later, the cop comes out. Cops come behind her and rear end her. Yeah. Yep. Ca- this is called Section Three: The Senator's Daughter's Cure. I like that you gave it these classy <laughs> titles, Tim. So he could move it along. Okay. Because she so keeps driving, it's, right? It's the police. Get no, caught. she st- she st- she eventually drives, but at this point, she's stopped, and the police rear end her. Oh yeah. Then the police start a whole gunfight with them, and uh, they the get pl- but the shot police at- run. They don't die. They don't die. <laughs> they get she runs off then yes but the police had and guns they were up against that, bow and arrows guys with crossbows and they ran yep and they get and i think their car gets left behind and they go back through the portal and they're like yeah. what are we gonna tell the captain oi 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 <laughs> we lost the car with all his pornography in the trunk <laughs> he's gonna be so mad <laughs> Uh, side <laughs> thing, actually, there was a scene earlier where the, the same guys shoot people with arrows and in the making of thing I saw, they were really just shooting people with arrows. Oh no. Yeah. What do you mean? Like that's how they did that stunt. Like, like it wasn't like they were just doing the thing where like, I think it's very common in movies where a person okay. reacts like, ah, and all of a sudden they haven't like, they act like they just got hit. It pops out. They were showing behind the scenes stuff and it's just like, there were dudes up on the rock shooting <sighs> arrows at guys who must have been wearing pads beneath them. Like, so like, I'm like wow, that's rubber arrows, nerf arrows, George. I mean, they were sticking into their bodies. Oh really? Oh, I mean, not like they're bare flesh, but like, and like some of them are on fire. Like that's what I'm saying. Like Ooh, yeah. if you watch the making of this scene, like it would, it was a, would be a better movie than it ends up looking like, <laughs> uh, she drives off, runs out of gas, runs out of gas. She walks in the desert. Cause Elvis walks, and walks has a guitar next to her for some reason yep she falls asleep thinks the guitar guitar is her boyfriend yeah (laughs) she says roger or whatever your name is close the drapes because it's you know the middle of the day it's the middle of the morning in the desert Mm -hmm. and then a tiger comes up to her and starts licking her face guitar here but someone's looking me from behind i don't know if she thought the guitar was her boyfriend (laughs) i didn't get that no, I but, think yeah. she thought it was her dog. Cause she's like, Rufus, your breath smells like dead fish. <laughs> and yeah, it's a fucking tiger. And she has one of what's becoming a pet peeve of mine. People in movies encountering <laughs> tigers or lions and not being truly pant shitting frightened like they should be. No. Yeah, we've been through this. Yeah. In the Roar. movie Roar. Like they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're scared and she's scared. But like. If Tim, if I wake up in the middle of the fucking desert and suddenly there's a tiger in my face, mm-hmm. it's hysterics. Yes. I'm just, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to make cute jokes like good kitty, good kitty. No, I'm like, ah, like. It's like Wizard <laughs> of Oz. That was scary. Yeah. Alice and then was, the tiger's like, no, put him on, put him on. <laughs> so far. Wasn't Alice. Alice was Wait, a different why movie. Alice? I oh, said, not yeah. Alice. Oh, you said Alice. 
I said Alice. That's what you always call Dorothy. You always just call her not Alice. Yes, not Alice. Like, I love that story with the scarecrow and the tin woodman, the cowardly lion, and not Alice. Um, <laughs> so, so two, yeah, the, the, these two the Beastmaster's there. Yep. <laughs> Maybe. Well, <laughs> they try. She falls, in love, she falls in love with him. Well, I'm just saying they get to know each other here. Yeah. Because there's a one when at, they're at the end of the meeting in the Arizona, if you notice, he, he says something nice to her and he looks at her and they hold on his eyes. They hold on her eyes. Oh, They're like, is that supposed to mean the movie, yeah. <laughs> that they like each other? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Blank stares. Well, because they apparently <laughs> spend all day laying in the desert. Yes. And then at night, they're in the same spot. And like, there's weird devil dogs that have like alligator tails. Oh, yeah. And he's like, I don't move. They'll eat your soul. And he's like, Tiger and I, Ra, are going to go watch. And she's like, she speaks to the guitar like, what's that tiger? Oh, no, the, the ferrets. The ferrets. She's like, what's that tiger got that I don't got? I'm oh, like... Oh. Yeah, I know already. She's like, <laughs> she's like Olo just, and Polo. Now, granted, no, no it's that's not what's their names? <laughs> Poco, Kudo and, and Kudu and Kudu, Kodu, Kodu and Podu, Kodin. Uh, something like that. Kodin <laughs> and Duke. I don't know. But, but I do have to say that don't they find a dead something? A dead what? I don't know. Dar says there's nothing worse, nothing worse than a dead iguana. Oh, that's what. That's you're right. That's actually what she dis- she describes. <laughs> The tiger's breath is you smell like a dead oh, iguana. Okay, I thought so. Nothing, and he's yeah, like, which nothing made me worse. wonder why she knows that that smells like. Yeah, you smell worse than a dead iguana. And he says nothing's worse just, than that, dead not iguana. dead fish. Yeah, how does she um, know? That? But George, I yeah. have a list of things oh, that are so worse. Oh, the list <laughs> worse than a dead iguana. Things that smell worse or are worse uh, are just are worse. Okay, it was both. Let's hear it. So, right. what's worse than dead iguana? An iguana uh-huh. who tells. Knock knock jokes all day. That that is bad. That's bad. I mean, that's how an iguana gets dead. Because <laughs> this iguana said, "Knock knock." Who's there? Ig. Ig who? Iguana tell you another knock knock joke? Uh, ah. Did it work? The ig who? You screwed up. <laughs> no, iguana tell you another knock knock joke. No, but yeah, you, you always have to use the who. No, no. <laughs> bah. These are new. Okay, Henny Youngman, what's your next joke? <laughs> Uh, an iguana who has an, an infectious bite due to his germ-infested saliva. That's worse. <gasps> that sounds like an actual description of a Komodo <laughs> dragon. Yes. And the third nice. thing that's worse than a dead iguana, the, in, the uh-huh. inside of a tauntaun. It smells they, worse. Wow, you, you, really, you transition there halfway from what's worse to smells worse. <laughs> that, Tim, Sorry. Can I, can I offer some constructive advice? <laughs> sure. Yeah, Stick to that smells. That was not your best list. Stick to smells. <laughs> <laughs> the knock knock joke one. The other ones kind of maybe worked, but <laughs> all right. Um, meanwhile, uh, so the witch lady, Lorana, and uh, Arklon, D- yep. Ducals, what's his name? Arklon. Ar- is it Arklon? Yes, I wrote it. I saw That's it. what I wrote, Arklon, yeah. Uh, they go through uh, the, mor- the portal into LA. Um, they're like, wow, everything looks so weird here. This is when I realized that this movie was going to be a comedy because they go and buy <laughs> clothes from an offensive Italian gay stereotype. Well, wait a minute. They do go through the same time yep. as, as Dar because they open up gas pipe and trap oh. Dar there with flames. Remember? You're right. Dar, Dar and, the, and the tiger and, jump through moments like after them. Yeah. Oh, because they have they Vicky. They have Vicky. They kidnap Vicky. Remember? You're, wait. Well, yeah. How did they get Vicky? Uh, How did they matter. get anywhere? They, they the capture attacked. the lady and somehow, somehow, I guess Vicky says it or it seems like they're talking about nuclear stuff. And I'm like, where did they get this idea from? And it turns out there really is a nuclear thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a nuclear bomb, though. It's they call it something else. I was it's hoping like a you little thing. Down. It's a little container that an, an invisible man would steal if one would want. Yeah. Nuclear and- material. Nuclear material. <laughs> yeah. What a strange thing to say. <laughs> Perhaps somebody with this, with ability to see the, the immediate future would say that. Um, so they're going through L.A., but of course we didn't – oh, we didn't mention – did we mention that Arklon is – you know, he's you know dressed like a big barbarian and he's got half of a phantom and the opera mask on. Yep. And, Fits right in. Uh, Lorana is – yeah. Lorana is dressed like 80s-tastic babe with, with her, her bosom out. Her cleavage. Not really. I mean, you see it. Yeah, her cleavage. Because people mentioning. keep talking about cleaving her bosom, and uh, and Kari Wurz's character Jackie is just dressed like an '80s person, or an, I guess '90s mm-hmm. person. So they go. Yeah, so they do a terrible stereotype of a gay man who sells. Yeah, they go immediately. Fashion. First thing they do is they go to a clothing store. Yeah, it's like. Yep. 
And Jackie calls to blend in. Arklan Leatherface. I'm like, oh, here's, here come the jokes. She did call him that when yep. she met him or something. Yep. Yeah. So they they go. They he trusts her to stay outside the fitting room while he goes in the fitting room, <laughs> and she just runs away. <laughs> she try, She runs away. Of course, <laughs> he, he, he comes out. He's place. real pissed off. He starts. There's a scene. Where he's using his ray gun, which like now it's like creating wind. Yeah, it and does. it's blowing open like dressing room doors, and there's ladies in their underwear going eek. Oh, that's right. I'm like, oh no, this is silly. <laughs> this is a silly movie. <laughs> that was a Benny Hill and, sketch. <laughs> yeah, it really was. And he throws around the offensive gay stereotype, and um, we cut to another room where Ursa was changing the witch, and she's like, "What is he doing now?" Yes. Like none of them are acting like this is not what I want for my villains. <laughs> no. And so, yeah, the grand mastermind, the guy who conquered this other world, basically got foiled by telling a girl, now you stay here. And right. then he goes away and then she runs away. That was the big plot. Yep. Now we're on to section five. What is section five called, Tim? Uh, Arklan and the Witch and Jackie in L.A. land after buying clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know at some oh. point we see cops coming. Cops come because poor Dar is trapped behind those flames. Was he still there? Yeah. He was. You're right. And the tiger. The cops have him. Yep. And the cops are like, call the zoo. Who's this guy? Yeah, and like, Do you have a tranquilizer gun? Yeah. For the tiger and for that guy, meaning, you know, <laughs> Dar, because he's, you know. Yeah. Looks like Tarzan. They take him to the police station, right? Yep. And they take. And, like, they're just kind of cool with him. Well, they're asking just him talking stuff. With it. They didn't tie they're him up. They're asking him yeah. stuff, but they're. Yeah, and where's the tiger at this point? Does the tiger escape? We assume they took him to the zoo. They're like, he's at the zoo. They, they yeah, said but the that tiger comes point. back. How does that happen? Oh, because they go to the zoo, George, at the end. Spoilers. Oh, I didn't Very convenient. That. <laughs> yeah. And the same cops also go to the uh, the clothing store where Arklan and Lorana fucked everything up, and they're like, yeah. so he was blowing all your clothes around, huh? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And I guess then Dar, Dar the Beastmaster, hears that and he realizes that's Arklan. He must escape. So he escapes, just runs out of the room. Through the window. Through, you know, he jumps through a window in slow motion, which is pretty cool. But and he does, he is running through a hallway and like, it's funny, there's a guy in a ladder. He just throws the guy in the ladder in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and Jackie's there to pick him up somehow. That's yeah. what happens. She's just there in her car. But does Jackie have the kudu and the pudu this whole time is that why i think she did have them i think she does and so maybe we can argue that they're communicating through that somehow because he says they're my my hands my little thieves yep and that's why and then they run up and they pitch her butt yep and he's like she's like oh they're little thieves like, that's not that's not appropriate and when she picks them up she's like they they stole these tapes it's called traveling wilburys volume <laughs> two i don't know what this oh, is wait <laughs> But Tim, there never was a Traveling Wilburys no. Volume 2 because those wild guys did a Volume 1 and a Volume 3. Is <laughs> well, this why? This is why. It, wow. He's weasels. Who replaced Roy Orbison on that one, Tim? I don't know. Was it Pete Best? I've never heard him. <laughs> and she's like, Nobody knows. Wow. She's like, some old guys. I don't know who they are. Traveling Wilburys. Uh, so, Arklan. Arklan goes out to the bar and somehow... The friends, can you imagine this Arklan with the with the uh, Phantom <laughs> with of the Opera big, face, his, his uh, red opera mask, and his weird barbarian outfit and cape? He befriends a military man and gets drunk with him. That's what ha- he takes yep. him out back, and he sucks his memories out so he knows where the nuclear weapon is. Oh yeah, and we're by the way, that's a power he has. He could suck mm-hmm. brains out. Yep. Not literally, like like he just he goes, "Yo, be blank minded," like like a Vulcan, like Spock. Spock can do it. When Spock does it, does it erase their brains? No, no. No, so it's not like Vulcan. And he got so many memories out of his head. Okay, you didn't like my first list? Here's a list uh, of memories oh no. Arklan wished he did not see in the soldier's head. Okay? Uh-oh. <laughs> Was it the 1962 issue of Playboy starring <laughs> Precious Waters? That could be one. He wouldn't want to see that. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's one. That's mine. That. Come on, Arklan would like that. I, I don't think so, because Arklan doesn't appreciate the bosom of Lorana. <laughs> Well, here's some memories Just you didn't saying, want to Arklan see. Just saying, Arklan maybe interested in other stuff. Okay. Uh, the time this soldier cried while watching Cats the Musical. Uh, the time this soldier cried when his pet goldfish <laughs> Wait, killed who's himself. who's the soldier? Oh, that soldier. Okay. Yeah, that soldier. He sucked his memories <laughs> his pet out. pet fish killed himself. I want to know how. Uh, he saw the time that the soldier uh, cried reading his pet goldfish's suicide note about 
how the cat's musical drove him to suicide. There, you found out. <laughs> Terrible list. Uh, no, I want to know how he killed himself, not why he killed oh. himself. I assumed, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he's jumped out and suffocated. That's the way. They can do that. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, they do that. It's rough, rough way to go. You know um, they can do that? They can. I, yeah, I've heard people talking about that before. Like, I don't know if they're actually committing suicide or they're just trying to escape. Trying to and escape. Just being like, oh, there's no water. This mad hell. Who can really know in. what a fish thinks, Tim? No. Our clown. Yep. He could. That's true. He could. Um, Vicky yeah, he Star finds out where the nuclear bomb is. Yep. Yes, right. At Dar and uh, what's her name? Jackie? Vicky. Vicky. They go to her house, which is a big mansion. They have this a butler. This is filmed in the Park. And he's like, my a dear, butler. not another surfer. Yep. My, my. Yep. Not another acid yep. fiend. And he serves them food, <laughs> and he's like, is this for eating, <laughs> or is this for a show? And she goes, maybe both. And they ho, ho, ho. Why would Dar think and, it's yeah. for show? Why would he think food is I, art at all? <laughs> I know. Why, 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 <laughs> Tim, why does Dar speak English if he's from another universe? <laughs> why? <laughs> and his bird... And the weasels are there, and the butler's like, oh, dear. I can't have this these. This is too much. These pterodactyls. I mean, these pterodactyls. <laughs> pterodactyls. <laughs> these pair of dactyls, two of them. He says that. Yep. These rats. Yeah, so they're just they're going nuts on the food, and he's just like, oh, my word, blah, blah, blah. It's like, this scene does nothing. <laughs> no, it's comedy, George. <laughs> it's just As, comedy. It doesn't advance the it plot. It was time for the butler it's pretty... to shine. <laughs> yeah, it was his. <laughs> like, my dear. You know, I'm calling your father. I will point out this woman missed her <laughs> sister's wedding, and yes. everyone's just pretty nonchalant about it. Like, I think if that happens in your family, really, that's a bit more – like, you, you're you saying you're on your way. There's sirens in the background. You don't show up at the wedding until the next day. Like, people are like – they're probably more well, – anyway, bad life. Yep. Uh, let's cut to the chase. What happens next? Um, well, they break into the military base because the bad guys somehow break in. they he, got uh, the IDs. She made IDs because she's a witch. That's right. Yep. She made IDs and uh, they break in and something about the IDs doesn't work. So uh, Arklon they just start hits, they, hits them on top of their helmets in an amusing like clonk way. Yes. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Knocks them out. That, very Benny Hill. You're right. Yes, Benny Hill. Yeah, they, they, run, they run out of the military base with the, with the goods and <laughs> with the thing. Uh, there's a car chase as the army chases them. I do want to uh, oh, point out to everybody yeah. again that this guy has long hair and a Phantom of the Opera mask and was able to walk into this <laughs> yeah. military base. It's like... <laughs> and he looked at the, the Oh, and the military... Can we also say the military base, Tim? Yeah. It's just the desert. We don't see shit. <laughs> yes. Like, we see maybe a fence at one point. Like, they, <laughs> like this is this is some base-level crap. <laughs> so they get out, yeah, and they're running through the desert. Uh, well, basically... Uh, Arklon now steals Liana's mind. He says, I don't need you anymore. Yep. And he runs off. Oh, yeah. The reason he needed Lirana, we should say this whole time, yeah, yeah. is because she was the only one who knew where oh. the portal was and knew how to work it. He grabs her mind. He does the same brain sucky thing. It's like, it needs to be the full moon. Which That's is. two hours from now. Yes. <laughs> and he leaves her there laying in a pile. So they join. Uh, he runs she, off. She joins forces with Vicky and Dar, the witch. Yeah, who show up like shortly thereafter. Yep. How do they know that's where it's at? Uh, they've. Oh, Vicky. Is it because the eagle? Vicky keeps calling her dad, the senator. That's what happens. Oh, is that movie. why? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm coming, is dad. Is it also the eagle, I'm though? Coming. The eagle. She's looking through the eyes, maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe that. I don't know. Maybe okay. it's the tiger. The tiger's writing them like from the prison. He's writing letters saying, please come get, get me out, please. It's not great in here. Yeah, tiger. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a stupid joke. I love it. So. <laughs> Just, you know, honestly, Tim, that wouldn't even be out of place in this movie. No, it wouldn't. So they end up at and a we, zoo. We, they, I don't they know do why. Tell us it's, oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's where the portal was, I guess. No, that, it was still in the wall. But it wasn't before. You're right. I, I and they do say it's going to take him two hours to get back. And like, that's two hours from now. Um, oh, it's because the, the, yeah, the eagle is looking. They're wondering where they, he is. And she's like, uh, he's like, I see trees and animals. Oh, green stuff. Yeah. And Vicky thinks for like five minutes. She goes, oh, I know the zoo. Yep. <laughs> so that's something. So yeah. Why is he going to the zoo? Um, I don't remember. 
We should mention that Lorana the Witch is like the comedy relief in this movie that's already a comedy. She's got yes. like funny stuff. Yep. This is when she makes the line like, I think my bosom does cleavage already. <laughs> and it's like, that's probably the best part of the movie. I can turn this off now. Sure. You've yep. said that. She said that like three times now. <laughs> no, she kept making other things about like the first time is definitely like, I can think of other things to do with my bosom than rip out my heart. I don't know. It's a, she talks about her bosom a lot. She, she does. does. She does. We're at the zoo, and for some reason, the zoo seems to have a circus-like arena. You notice that? Yeah. Not only that, it 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 does. It, and when they have the final battle between the Beastmaster and Archlon, <laughs> yeah. a pre-recorded track plays. Jackie where turns it says, it on. "Oh, Jackie turns it on." Mm-hmm. But the recorded track says, <laughs> "In this corner, the African lion." Yeah. <laughs> and in this corner, the something hedgehog, and they're calling Archlon a hedgehog and Dar a lion. I'm like. So this zoo makes <laughs> animals fight in blood yeah, sports? And it puts a hedgehog up against a lion? That doesn't seem very fair. It does not. We get a lot Sounds of other like animal cameos show. here. We get a black panther. We get a, uh, a elephant. An elephant. Uh, we get Every uh, animal a comes pair to of watch. zebra. Yep. There is uh, a bunch of rhinoceri, because we know that's how you say plural. There's a, a blue <laughs> whale who keeps being right. like, I don't think I should be here. No. Um, yeah, there's uh, – what else is there, Tim? There's uh there's uh <laughs> some squirrels. They forgot the squirrels. They're there. Squirrels, yep. Yeah. There there's uh there's some bugs. They're not bugs, animals, yep. George. There's a slug. Yes, they are. There was a turtle that was coming, but by the time he got there it was he all was over. Late. <laughs> oh, that poor turtle. And a rabbit was coming. And there was but a hair. He took a, a nap because he's like, I got time. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh what else? What else? And there was and a fox know. coming with the gingerbread man, but he ate the gingerbread man. He's <laughs> fucking ripped him apart. Yes. He's like, That's my nature. Yep. Uh let's do some other Aesop's fables. <laughs> And there was a lion, but he had a thorn in his paw. He's like, yep. oh, it hurts. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What else? Yeah, we're good. All right. You're good. So, yeah, they have the big final battle. Um, Which, George, if Dar can yep. control animals, there's an elephant. Everything is there to defeat this guy, but they just fight with swords. Oh, here's the thing, Tim. I don't think Dar can control all animals. No? I think he has a bond with those three oh, types. all right. All right. I, I, yeah. I... I, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I think it's like he's got the lion, the tiger, the weasels, and the, and the bird. Yep. Okay. Uh, so they're fighting with an axe, and uh, yeah, Arklan they, has the laser gun. They rip the ground open. I don't. I forget how. It's like a big chasm. Yep. Smoke. Big, yeah. Yeah. Big old, big old hole in the ground. Rue take, um, takes the, Arklan's the, gun. Oh, before we mentioned this, the eagle like attacks Arklan's Arklan's face again. And Archon shoots it oh. with the ray gun and kills the eagle. And we think George. it's like laying there dead. Don't which make call back sad. to the first movie oh. where Kudu and Pudu, one of them dies and he's sad. But unlike this movie, that movie where one of them really was dead until being resurrected here. Yes. He picks up the eagle and the eagle's fine. The eagle's like, he's like, oh, yeah, the eagle's okay. And um, that's where he gets his, yeah. his, his, uh, the eagle rips off his mask. And I, I too was like, eh. <laughs> it's just what's red it's, it's infected yeah. it's probably infected because you wear a mask on top of it because you wear a mask on it all the time yeah <laughs> what's the least impressive injury is it this guy or the guy from claws who ruined his whole oh. life fighting a bear to have his arm be not hurt but maybe he was i guess this which guy. is the least impressive animal injury yeah this this we never saw that guy's the arm guy yeah yeah but he he was full-on swinging an axe at a grizzly bear right. in that movie's end i think he was okay Maybe this guy at least had a cut. Maybe if we saw the arm of the guy from Claws, it could have been hanging on by like a thread of flesh, for all we know. Mm, maybe it was a robot arm like Bucky. Maybe. Maybe. Could yeah. have been. The Major shows up. Who's the Major? The cop? He, the Major is comic relief, too. He's the one like, so oh, how do I... Right, there was the Major. How do I defuse this? Hmm, this button? I don't know. That's what he's just saying. Yeah, old These guy buttons? who's just like... I don't know. Yeah. Here's a question, Tim. Why wasn't that her dad? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, is that like, your dad? Because <laughs> we, the way he's we have acting, all this stuff. The senator, yeah, he'd be like, "Are you my daughter?" I don't know. I wonder if there was like in the making this movie, if they had another actor of like some renown to play her dad, and like he just stormed off the set, like yeah, after filming some scenes, or like, well, <laughs> let's bring in the major. It was Charlton it's weird, Heston. right? It was probably Charlton Heston. Yeah. Um, he saw the set with all the monkeys. He goes, "This is a madhouse." <laughs> and he stormed off the set too. you got it you figured yep. it out you got it yep we did that's who needs a revenge sequel when we got that uh oh did we mention that Arklon and him fight and he knocks Arklon into the chasm yep. and we have a weird close-up on Arklon's face as he goes i'm the king of the world <laughs> and he's bursting he's 
Wait, what year did Titanic come out? <laughs> 98, I think. 99. 97. So this is not a reference to that. No. Um, well, yeah, that, so he yells, I'm the king of the world. That's James and Cagney he bursts too, into right? flames. In uh, the end of the movie where it? he's a gangster, he burns on top of a tower. Doesn't he say, I'm the king of the world? I oh, forget. maybe. Maybe that, that actually makes him Because he burns and that's the end. Arklon's dead. Yep. And uh, they ref- they defuse the bomb in a scene of comedic, quote unquote, <laughs> comedic. That like you feel no tension. You're like, okay, no, no tension. And then Dar's like, well, I have to go back to my world. She's like, but I love you. But she never says that. No, uh, Jackie or whatever. She gives him a little kiss. But there is a moment, like Tim says, where he's like, they stare. She's like, other. maybe you'll come back one day. And he's like, I think I would like that. Yes, as if noticing the first time she's a babe, right? <laughs> yes. What happens to Lorana, the witch? I know. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to oh, that. Oh, sequel. You forget. Sequel. He goes back to his world and he finds her car she left there and people are worshiping it. Yep. Did you, you yeah, recognize so the that, that goes little through. cameo? The, the guy, yeah, the and guy he the talks guy to? The guy from uh, the Hills of Eyes yes. walks up and he's like, I'm making a pilgrimage, this mm-hmm. item of the gods. I have myrrh. And it is a, it's her car. And they're like, we don't know what it could be. It's from another world. What 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 does it do? And at that moment, somebody hits the radio and it plays music. And they all jump back. <laughs> yes. And Dar goes, rock and roll. <laughs> and that was actually kind of funny. Like, I was like, all right, that's okay. <laughs> and uh, the movie ends. To rocking out yep, music. So, yep. Revenge. Wherever you are, wherever you're hiding, I'll find you. Okay. What what this part of the show. What this? We yeah. talk about our uh, uh, wild card question. Who's most likely to get an elevator speeding ticket in Papua New Guinea? <laughs> I would say. <laughs> well, I mean, I know. Who? You start. Uh, Kari Wurr's character. Uh, you mean we Vicky? We know that she... Vicky. Vicky speeds no matter what the vehicle That's right. put her in. Oh, my God. You put her in a sport car, she speeds. You put her in an elevator, she goes even faster. She's in the speed prequel. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, she is. Yeah, speed prequel, which is just called Spee, because they didn't have the D yet. <laughs> Takes place in Papua New Guinea. That was the original version. Takes place in Papua. New- yep. Instead of um, mm-hmm. uh, instead of Keanu Reeves, it's uh, it's Robert Patrick from Speed Two, also okay. the Lost Boys. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's not Robert Patrick. Robert Patrick's no. the guy from Terminator, Terminator Two. I don't know. <laughs> Jason Patrick. I don't know. Billy that, Billy you know Mummy. What? Billy Mummy. How about Billy Barty, the guy Billy who played Barty. Gwildor? Yeah. <laughs> Billy Barty, the dwarf. Yeah. And uh, they're in an elevator, and she pushes the elevator going up too fast, and he gets squished down, and that's how Billy Barty got small. Oh, what? what? Cartoon <laughs> physics. Yep. <laughs> no. I think it <laughs> stops first. Then, uh, then uh, Will, Willy ceiling? Wonka gets on, and they start again. It oh, shit. Speeding. Which Willy Wonka? Is it Gene Wilder, Gene Wilder. or is it uh, Timothy Chalamet? Okay. It speeds Good right, thing is not that Johnny Depp version. Right through a glass ceiling, and it keeps speeding. <clears throat> they have to continue going upwards, or otherwise it'll explode. You know the plot. And then what happens at the end? Does Dennis Hopper kill them all? <clears throat> um, is Dennis Hopper play Slugworth? Well, Willy Wonka had visited Willy Wonka at the beginning of the movie and slipped him some... Uh, Wait, Some, Willy Wonka had visited Willy Wonka to be in the movie? No. Uh, is this like a time no, displaced villain, Willy Wonka? The villain. Slugworth. Slugworth. And he gave him some mm-hmm. uh, gobber forget-me-nots. And he forgot about the whole ploy. Oh. oh. <laughs> there you go. That's my favorite wow. sort of sequ- prequel where George. everybody forgets everything. That was good. <laughs> did a good job. <laughs> I sure hope. It started good. Let's just mention Horngens. It did. It did start good. <laughs> but then, George. Yeah. Then you want always me to, ruin it. You want me to read my I want to go first. Okay. I want to go first. All right. So you're doing so, the same uh, thing as me. Yep. This is a tricky thing because <clears throat> this movie turns out, Tim, there is a Beastmaster 3. Oh. And a Beastmaster TV series, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I'm not going to focus on Dar. We know what happens to Dar. He goes back to his world, he makes plans to see Vicky. He knows what rock and roll is now, so he probably joins a hair metal band. Now I'm interested in Lorana. Lorana and her bosom. <laughs> no. Lorana, we lose track of her. Now, it's entirely possible, folks, that in this movie they did film scenes with what happens to this character. Yeah. But we're not privy to what these scenes are. Because wouldn't you know it? She finds that she's trapped on Earth because she doesn't get to the portal in time. True. 
And she, you know, she's a person who's very good at kind of like pushing up to other people in power, mm-hmm. just like she did with Archlon. She finds that major who actually he gets a promotion to a general. Oh, the major that did yeah, she de- kind of de- de- deactivated the bomb. The one who defuses the bomb. She's <laughs> okay. like, well, the worst thing that could happen in the world was that bomb coming through. Mm-hmm. So you coming in and defusing the bomb shows you are by the law of subtraction. You are the most powerful person. In really? The world. And she be. <laughs> yep. And they become they become inseparable. Uh, there is a third guy that joins them. It was the soldier that they helped before, but his mind has now been wiped blank. If you remember, oh, no. and he's still he kind of dumb. He came and make noises. Yeah, oh, he no. hangs out with the three of them. The three of them so, form this group. They go clothes shopping. They go back <laughs> to that same store. They get this cool like black outfits. But isn't the major like and black outfits? I don't know. What's it for? Who are you? She's like, just trust me. I, okay. I have an idea. So here's where things get messed up. She convinces oh, no. him to create an insurrection against the United States government. Oh, no. They, it <laughs> fails. Because <laughs> it's only three, three of them. Because it's only three of them. It's really poorly thought out. And the three of them are put <clears throat> before a tribunal of science elders because it was a, a law against the science. And they realize mm-hmm. normal prison might not hold this woman. She is a witch. She does have some powers. And instead, they try out this new method of punishing people. Okay. They project her into the phantom zone. Jesus. <laughs> and the three of them stay there for years until the planet Earth explodes. It's a different universe. Yep. And then they are released and they we meet their new names. The general. Ugh. The major general. He is General Zod. <laughs> yep. Jesus. And the dumb guy is Nan and she's Ursa. And together <laughs> they land on another planet where another person f- who escaped Earth had landed there, and he became, let's say, Aquaman. Okay. And they just fucking kill him, and that's the revenge. <laughs> oh, he's going into the Superman universe. <laughs> yeah, what was the revenge? Yep. Who wanted revenge? Uh, she got <clears> revenge <throat> on the Earth because it blew up, and she's like, fuck all y'all. Okay. <laughs> yep. Sometimes the revenge, like we said, Tim, is it's, living best. It's almost like she, she just finished best. watching this movie. No, I watched it yesterday. <laughs> I did, yeah. No, it was good. Good movie. <laughs> good movie. Good sequel. Yep, good movie. All right. What's your sequel, Tim, and how does it involve Lorana? Well, I'll start the music. As you saw, the end of the movie, Vicky left her car behind. And all those wise men came and gave that car gifts, like frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> Wait, how many wise men were there? And a velvet glove that one guy brought. Oh, that's weird. But also at the end of the movie, Beastmaster, he just ran off in the de- into the desert. I guess we could deal with his we didn't mention feelings that. for Jackie. He, he literally does just run. <laughs> like, it's the desert. He goes jogging off with his tiger. Yep. That's actually how the movie ends. Yeah. So when he comes back to the car, he found the holy men had found something amazing in the trunk. Oh. See, remember, Vicky's crazy, the police said. She's the crazy one, and she goes to crazy parties. Well... She had uh, forgotten all about the crazy stuff that happened at that party, and she had locked someone in her trunk. And when those people oh, no. heard a knocking, they opened it up. It was Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And what? everybody was worshiping him, worshiping him as a strange god that they called Blood Sugar Sex Magic God. So he preached the power of equality, and he wanted people to suck his kiss. This made no sense, but people believed him a god, and they all danced naked in the rain like he told them to. Were they naked or were they wearing socks over their genitals? Uh, this, uh, miss, miss and match. Well, they didn't have socks. George. Okay. No socks. Sandals. It was no very, socks in this world? Very sandals. painful. They, they wore sandals over genitals. That thing was painful. Okay. So Dar, the Beastmaster, he was outraged. He knew that mm-hmm. Flea was was no god. He was from this person. He was this person from L.A. He was easily uh-huh. a false prophet. Did so, they find him under a bridge sometime? Yeah. Is that where they found him in L.A.? Okay. <laughs> and uh, Dar... That's where he drew some blood, right? He did. Don't get ahead of me. Yeah, okay. Dar yelled, <laughs> oh, I'm ruining, I'm sorry. yelled at him that he's a false prophet. And Flea was furious uh-huh. and told his followers to take ven- vengeance on the interloper. He said, take him away, take him away, take him away now. <laughs> but Dar said, I am the righteous and you are the wicked. And he jumped through the portal to get Vicky to help uh-huh. him. And to make a long story short, he, he found... They have an uplift mofo party plan? He found Vicky and the witch uh-huh. Liana had joined forces uh-huh. to create a company called I Like Dirt. They drove around in a van and groomed celebrities' pet monkeys. Wow. You see, Liana had Bubbles lost... Bubbles the Chimp! 
lost her magic after Arklan sucked all her memories out of her head. And so she's had to get together with Vicky and make a living. So they bathed Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson's chimp, Bubbles. And they bathed bathed Sinbad's monkey, Sir Psycho Sexy. And they bathed Polly Shore's (laughs) monkey, the Funky Monk. Polly Shore. Yeah, the Funky Monk. That could be real. (laughs) They bathed Billy Baldwin's monkey that was called Billy. Uh, And they even cleaned up. Is Billy Baldwin the guy from Firefly? Mm. Or is he the one that's Alec Baldwin's younger brother? Mm, Alec Baldwin's younger brother. Okay. They even cleaned up Prince's monkey, who was called Purple Stain. (laughs) Uh, And they cleaned Keanu Reeves monkey called Skinny Sweaty Man, who Vicky and Leanna believed to be just a confused Keith Richards. Uh, (laughs) Why why Keanu Reeves? And they also went to Millie and Vanilli's house. They had a monkey called Lovely Man, but they were pretty sure it was just a a monkey doll because its arms and legs fell off every time it got wet. So, so... (laughs) Dar told Vicky that a mad god called Flea was in her car in his land. And Vicky was mortified as they already assumed he was dead and they had a funky crime funeral for him. In funky f- crime funeral. In fact, after the party, she accidentally left one of the traveling Wilburys in her trunk. She didn't know which one because oh. they're just a bunch of Wait. old men. She doesn't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> so they all jumped through the portal, went to the parallel universe so they could reclaim the Beastmaster's land and get revenge mm-hmm. on this false god. But when they got there, the insane god was gone. He had gone road tripping. He said he was jonesing for some Californication, and he went to the other side. So thus, they all just sat down and relaxed for a hot minute. And Dar said, that guy was warped. And that movie was called Beastmaster 3, The Uplift Mofo Party Plan. There you go. Oh, I, <laughs> you already I ruined your joke, sorry. <laughs> you didn't yeah. ruin nothing. Um, I like the way that you started like with doing <laughs> a lot of Chili Peppers references. Kind of lapsed into just doing weird monkey lists. <laughs> There's references. And then kind of swung back to Chili Peppers again. No, it never went away, George. No. You, just, right. you got to know your song names, which I don't expect yeah. you to know the, the name of every Chili Pepper. I was going to say Hilly Pepper. Hilly Pepper. Purple Stain, that's definitely a Chili Pepper song. It is. Yeah. yeah. You think I'm lying? All right. Yep. They gave it to Prince. Said, here, have this song. Yep. And Prince said, oh, I got this song. I'll give a song to Sinead O'Connor. Oh, they played like a magical yeah. thing like that. Sinead O'Connor oh, had a Stain song. is a song by the Chili Peppers as well. And who did she give her song to? Oh, to Peter Gabriel. And they shared And then it. Peter Gabriel gave the song to Kate, ba- uh, to Pete, uh, oh, no. Kate Bush when they were glued together that time. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, and then Kate Bush gave her song to George Bush. <laughs> and then George he Bush said, gave it to Saddam Hussein. He said, read my lips. No new songs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. This is, there we ended it. Did this just become our worst <laughs> episode? <laughs> no, write us. Okay. Seti Bimbo with the E at gmail.com. I will check if there's mail. There's no mail. You know, I'd want mail because I like talking. I don't I don't want to hear from you people, you gabbers. Ooh, reverse psychology. Unless it's Dirk Feelgood. Yep. He has something to say. Did, and, did uh, Dirk feel good, right? Nope. No. 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 Nope. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, give us all the stars. Follow us. Take a look at our blog because yep. I draw our revenge story. Uh, check out last week. I drew uh, a few weeks ago. I drew Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Basically, why you have to go listen to that episode about uh, Moonshine Mountain? There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, so we got to go. Oh, uh, so next week we're gonna go to Massachusetts, where they say Harvard Yard. <laughs> Harvard Yard. Oh, what's the movie gonna be called, Tim? <laughs> the Amazing Transparent Man. You can that sounds like right a very Massachusetts him. film. Yep, I can't wait to watch that. Definitely filmed in Massachusetts. See it on Tubi. It's very short. It's on Tubi? Tiny, yeah. All right, tiny. All right, is that it? Okay. Are we saying goodbye? Yes, goodbye. (laughs) Okay, goodbye. There you go. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party Line. It's a party line. Yeah, was, he, he came out and told Jesus he told, Christ. He, Look at this he, fucking idiot. This I is know. the shit you watch. <laughs> this guy he, was a comedian. He, he told jokes like, hey, my friend, he crossed a pigeon with a, a carrier pigeon with a woodpecker. And now every time it brings a mes- message, it knocks first. That's the kind of jokes he told. <laughs> yeah, so the sort of jokes you love. <laughs> yeah. It's a real Henny Youngman shit. <laughs>